afternoon everyone our day starts right here at hollywood studios which i am absolutely in love with because it has the decorations and they're still playing christmas music so that's always a plus now uh we just started our day off you know we rested a little bit we may or may not have seen a full-blown soccer game before coming it doesn't matter i did wake up at seven in the morning i tried to get a, a boarding group pass for rise of the resistance didn't work because it was sold out in five seconds but i am going to be trying again uh, very shortly at one we also have lunch at ronto roaster i'll probably be walking over there and then when the time comes i'll be trying to get a boarding group pass i don't know if i'm gonna get it hopefully i do man i really want to ride it so uh we'll see what happens then we'll enjoy our day here at hollywood studios then we're gonna have dinner at the boathouse super excited for it high expectations let's see if it performs So we're stuck right here, right in front of Echo Lake. Uh, we're waiting for the, the time frame to open up, right? I think it's uh, six minutes from now. But like, yeah, you could see a bunch of other people just stopping, sitting down, having their phones out, also getting ready to get some, some boarding passes. This is insane, I mean, it, I don't know how it was. I, I woke up at seven, right? I, I was already ready. The minute I saw it turn to 7 a.m., I, I clicked it, it took me like five, 10 seconds to get in, sold out, I'm like, all right i guess we'll see how it goes now i i seriously doubt we'll get it but uh it's worth a shot you know all right guys one more minute left we are all going to try i mean we, we really want to ride rise of the resistance so oh we're all in we're all in right <laughs> my dad the one that he's the drop he was the one that got it first but let's go okay we got it what group are we 93 93 and they're, and they're boarding 70 something right <laughs> all righty then now we are very hungry all right we get we accomplished the acquiring of the boarding pass but now it's time to eat then build my lightsaber then hopefully after i build my lightsaber go ride rise of the resistance it's gonna be an awesome day check this out guys the swarm of people just heading into galaxy's edge it happens it happens all the time galaxy's edge is possibly no i think it is the most popular land in all of walt disney world and it rightfully should be i mean it is an absolutely incredible land beyond immersive absolutely amazing and stunning so it makes sense that basically all of hollywood studios is walking in at the same time that we are walking in <laughs> all i want is a ronto wrap all right that's the only thing that my mind is focused on right now ronto wrap and then after i eat the ronto wrap i could focus on what material my hilt is gonna be like like what category my hilt will be and then we worry about hopping on to rise good priorities honestly like those are a nice set of priorities so uh, it's gonna be fun and then after that we'll see what we do so just like a little slight problem that that came up uh, i talked with the cast member we're, we're all good uh, the problem was that the estimated arrival time for our boarding group pass is going to be around the same time that I have the reservation for Savi's workshop. But the cast member told me, don't worry, go to Savi's, build your lightsaber. As long as you have a boarding group, as long as it's been called, they'll let you in. Don't worry about it. Build your lightsaber, then come back. So we're good. We're good. Oh, now we're really hungry. I have to figure out if this is only mobile order. Uh, a lot of quick service places, it's kind of weird right now because some require mobile order while others don't. It's it's kind of confusing sometimes, but we'll see what happens. I think we do need to mobile order Because I see everyone with their phones out right in front of the place. So yeah, we're gonna mobile order them All right guys, so yes, you didn't need to mobile order. We just put in the the order You can't see anything. It's way too bright out here right now, but uh, we have to arrive in about seven minutes and then uh, Yeah I'm really hungry. So hopefully they prepare it as soon as possible <laughs> all right guys we finally got our ronto wraps uh i remember when i first had this i mean it was a couple days into galaxy's edge opening it didn't necessarily blow me away so um we'll see how it goes this time maybe it got better so uh let's see all right guys i, I gotta be honest with you guys uh it's exactly how i remembered it, it it's not a mind-blowing food item like like a lot of people say that it's it's oh my god it's amazing to me it's it's not necessarily mind-blowing at all the sausage is good it's flavorful not the best sausage i've ever had i'm not a huge fan of coleslaw but the coleslaw does add to this a little bit N nice texture in there 
Pita bread is, is nice oh, as well. Yeah, what The best thing about this is that peppercorn sauce. The peppercorn sauce is actually really good. It gives everything an amazing taste. It's not mind blowing. And in my opinion, it is not worth $13. I'm sorry. All right, guys, I wanted to give my final thoughts on Ronto Roasters. I, I didn't, I kind of felt like it sounded a little bit mean. Maybe, I don't want it to make it sound like, like it's a bad restaurant. It's just that, in my opinion, it's a bit overpriced and kind of overhyped. Uh, it's a good restaurant. It really is. Uh, the food is good. The Ronto Wrap itself is is a decent food item. It's just not the best. I've had better sausage. I've had better better food in general. It's a good restaurant, and if you are looking to, to at least try it, if you haven't had it before, I do suggest giving it a shot. It's it's now an iconic food item. I suggest giving it a try. But but honestly speaking, worth thirteen dollars. Uh, that's debatable. Now, in in other news, it's starting to rain. Now, uh, uh, I don't want to put away the M50. Right now, it's not raining that much. So I don't think I'm going to put the M50 away just yet. But those clouds right there that do not look promising at all. Why? It was going to be a good day. And then and then the, the rain had to come in and say, hey, hey, you know about having good days? No. But uh, it is what it is. Hopefully, it just rains a little bit, not too much. Uh, then it goes away. Uh, by the time I come out with my lightsaber, I am going to be just doing so much with the lightsaber. I, I don't know what I'm going to be doing with it, but I will figure out stuff to do with it because it, it's a lot of fun just waving it around and looking like a real okay, Jedi. Well, we'll see what the day has in store now. Guys, <laughs> yeah, this is one of my favorite areas of all of Galaxy's Edge, the marketplace. It's just so well detailed and uh, it, it's, it's absolutely amazing. This entire land the attention to detail that the imagineers put into it it's absolutely incredible it's something that you really don't see in other lands and i truly believe that this is the future of hollywood studios something like this and and uh to an extent the uh, toy story land like, but not as much as this one this one is you are fully immersed in the magic all right the the cast members here they don't know what earth is they don't know what money is they only know about Batu. They only know about about credits. It's it's a full-on immersive experience, and that to me is the future that Hollywood Studios is heading to. And I do see the Hollywood Studios will be adding more lands like this in the next upcoming years. Uh, hopefully, you know, like uh, pr probably, most likely, if they continue this route, we'll be seeing an Indiana Jones land, which would be absolutely awesome. Maybe we see a Muppets Land, maybe we see other things. Maybe they start putting in some of the Fox movies that they purchased into Hollywood Studios, which would kind of make sense. We'll see what happens. All right, guys, we're checked in, and we're going to be making some scrap metal. Not, not, not a lightsaber, all right, that, that's because that's illegal, all right? We're making scrap metal. <laughs> I'm super excited. So the hilt type that I'm going for is, is uh, protect and defense. It looks really cool. I feel like that one, it reminds me a lot of the lightsabers of the, of the Jedi Temple Guards, uh, which are super cool lightsabers. And I think for my Kyber Crystal color, I'm going for green. So I feel like green and that type of style of like a Jedi Temple Guard kind of fits. Maybe I buy a yellow Kyber Crystal to fit even more. We'll see what happens. We are now waiting to go inside and build the lightsaber. I went with protection and defense. Take a look at the pin. Right, so they give a pin for each different uh, class that you build. Uh, Alejandro last year had power and control, which looked pretty cool, but this one is just beautiful. I think this is possibly the most beautiful looking one out of the four classes. Uh, and the best part is we keep the pin at the end, so yeah. Another pin to my, another fine addition to my collection. <laughs> I know what you're all thinking, this all looks like a lot of old junk. Well, let me assure you of something. Some of it is new junk as well. <laughs> what we humbly call ourselves the Gatherers. I'm assuming that we're all familiar with the legend of Luke Skywalker. Of course. Yeah, yeah you can yes. speak to me, there's no first order in here. So, <laughs> well, we hear there is another, a new Jedi. Does everyone know her name? Ray. Ray, that's right. And what she has started. It's the spark of hope that we've been waiting for. And that's why you're all here. To look ahead. 
to build this. A lightsaber. The lightsaber has been wielded by some of our greatest heroes and darkest enemies. And we begin with perhaps the most important part of a lightsaber. Uh, any ideas? Kyber crystal. Kyber crystal. Exactly right, the kyber crystal. Able to focus the energy of the force, to magnify it. Some say the kyber crystal is the heart of the lightsaber. The color of the crystal determines the color of the lightsaber's blade. And you may all know this from some of the greatest Jedi stories throughout history. The blue crystal. Like that of Master Obi-Wan Kenobi. His apprentice, Anakin Skywalker. And so we hear, red. Green. Qui-Gon Jinn. Ahsoka Tano. Master Yoda himself, and of course, Luke Skywalker. Vile, rare, and beautiful, like the one wielded by Mace Windu. Rare. By many, it is called the color of power, the crystal of Darth Maul, Asajj Ventress, Darth Vader, and now, Kylo Ren. Feel that connection. Build as you've all completed your hilts, and nothing unexpected or traumatic has happened. I now ask you leave those hilts where they are, and everyone step back. Many parts stronger now. Join. Yes, lightsaber, it begins. It is time your journey. Master Yoda, it is indeed time to take our first step. Activate. You can't really see it much, but the hilt itself is, is just absolutely stunning. Don't worry, when it gets dark, I'm going to be playing with this the entire time, but oh, this is awesome. All right, guys, I got the lightsaber, but before I got in, our boarding group was available for Rise of the Resistance. So after having an incredible experience building an absolutely stunning lightsaber, now we get to ride Rise of the Resistance yet again which is a mind-blowing experience of an attraction. I am Lieutenant Beck. As you heard from Ray, I have been tasked with getting you to Pakara. Raise the shields. We have company. First order TIE fighters. Reroute. Reroute. Right to a blue fire. We got a clear path for transport. Can make a jump. Star destroyers. This transport is now under the control of the First Order. You will exit and go to the right with your entire group together, border processing and interrogation.
this room never ceases to amaze me. It's, it's spectacular. Are you alright? I guess yes. I'll change that. These units follow me. <laughs> why do you have this data pad? And why is it so basic looking? Uh, don't worry, sir. I am documenting how great the First Order is. For the resistance? No, sir, for the First Order. <laughs> Uh, are you responsible for these units? I don't know them. Good, betray them all! <laughs> Enemies of the First Order, we will soon snuff out your meager resistance. You chose the wrong side, and now you will pay. The resistance prisoners. You have what I want. You know the location of the secret base, and I will take it from you. Tell them it's a prisoner transfer. Hey, you're not authorized. Wait, those are the prisoners. We are reaching a touch of block three. Your cover is blown. Find an alternate route. Who can make these two droids anyway? Detachment to level D. How brave, but ultimately hopeless. There's nowhere to run. This ride, this ride, I mean, it is, it, it truly is mind-blowing, it's, it's, you have to really ride multiple times in order to, to take in all the details, be able to just pick up on everything, it's, it was really good. it's amazing. <laughs> it's hard, it's hard to pick which one's better, this one or Flight of Passage, it really is. My dad says Flight of Passage, but I don't know. It's like I said the other day when I wrote Flight of Passage, it's like they're, they're constantly fighting. It's, you write one and you're like, well, this one's better. But then you write the other one and you're like, well, no, no, this one's better. Then you go back on the other one and you're like, well, hold up. Now I don't know what to pick. Just you can't go wrong with either or. That, that's, that's the final assessment. Guys, if you can see carefully here, look at these. These are gunk droid footprints, right? And if you follow it, boom, gunk droids. All right, guys, now before we head out of Galaxy's Edge, we're going to stop by Doc Onders real quick. Uh, there is quite a long line. We've already been waiting for some time, and we still got a long way to go. But uh, we want to go in. Ale is looking to buy a, uh, a brand new Kyber Crystal. And then I will also be trying that Kyber Crystal on my light table. But Ale, what color are you going to get? Great answer. You do it again? Nice, nice. We, Alejandro has purple, now I have green. There is, uh, there's blue, there's red, there's white, and there's yellow available. So, we'll see which one he goes for. A lot of things here are super cool, but super expensive. So, I have to refrain myself from seeing everything. <laughs> Well, 
Well, guys, we got a color reveal. I went with the red lightsaber. It sounds different. It looks pink right now, but when it's night, it looks red. So, but I'm not gonna lie. I actually really like how the green looks. You know, I didn't think I was gonna like it this much, but I do. And the hilt. I mean, I am absolutely in love with the hilt. I'm super glad I went with the with the protect and defense. It's really nice. And the cool thing about this is that it's actually really heavy. Like, like heavier than you would assume. And it's super cool because after we built the lightsaber, that was when me and Ale, we started watching Clone Wars. There's a scene where Anakin hands his lightsaber to Padme and Padme grabs it and she goes, whoa, it's heavier than you would think. And so I feel like that, that kind of connects into this, you know? It's really cool. If you guys ever played Battlefront 2, you know the light side and dark side heroes? Well, Luke, whenever you hover over him, he's just like... How does... What does Anakin do? He just... He just... I have way too much fun with these things, man. It's it, it's a lot of fun to just wave them around. And... Alright guys, so uh, right now I'm looking at the wait times. Try to decide what we're going to do. Uh, Smuggler's one right here has a 65 minute wait. The line looks brutally long. But 65 minutes is the shortest that I have seen it. Problem is, the Rock and Roller Coaster hasn't been open for the last two days, which kind of scares me a little bit. Hopefully, they don't put it uh, to operate seasonally, because <laughs> that's uh, that just means the death of Rock and Roller Coaster. Just look at the last two rides that went in seasonally: Primeval World and Stitch's Greatest Escape. Uh, yeah, I think we're gonna do Smuggler's Run. But on top of Rock and Roller Coaster being closed, uh, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway right now is temporarily closed. So. I just expect the more popular rides like, like oh, Smuggler's Run to increase in their wait time, so uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. This is where the line for Smuggler's Run starts. That's Toy Story Land. This is... This is crazy. This is not 65. I mean... This is one thing that I told you about the entrance of Galaxy's Edge. Why I like the other one better because the minute you cross in and you start seeing Galaxy's Edge, you don't see anything else. You're seeing Black Spider Outpost right here. I mean, you're seeing a lot. That's the Droid Depot right there. But then you look the other way. You see Toy Story Land, you see Buzz Lightyear. It's not as immersive as as the other entrance. So, yeah, if you want the full experience, enter through uh, where uh, the Muppet Vision is. That's the best entrance. All right, guys, I had to continue the streak here of uh, drinking blue milk. Just gotta find a place to drink it. So, guys, you see, it's all about personal taste and who's right and who's wrong. Like for example, I prefer the blue milk over the green milk. My dad said that he just tried like he just tried the green milk for the first time. He says that the green milk is better than the blue milk. See, it's all about personal taste and the fact that I'm right, right, and the blue milk is better. <laughs> it's all about personal taste. They do have completely different uh, taste profiles, so uh, just keep that in mind. I do like the blue one better because it has more of a fruity, coconutty taste. That that's why I prefer it more than the green milk. That is one of the things that I love about this land so much is the attention to detail. Look at this blaster shot on the Millennium Falcon. When we get up, you'll be able to see more of them. I'll show you guys. But it's the attention to detail. You see all those blaster shots on the Millennium Falcon, uh, the, 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 the ramp, everything, everything. And you could spend hours in this land looking at all the small little details and you wouldn't be able to see it all. It's, it's amazing. I mean, the, the detail in this land is unparalleled it's amazing well guys we are actually heading uh into backstage area in order to get in i can't record anything there's literally a sign right there that says no videotaping or anything so uh, i'm gonna follow the rules but uh yeah backstage <laughs> There you go guys, you see what I'm talking about? You see the blaster marks on the Millennium Falcon? It's it's amazing attention to detail that, that just separates this from everything else.
to your team, press it as quickly as you can, one of the things. Move out, my friends. See you in the cockpit. I won't be in the cockpit, of course. It's a figure of You're still here. Go, go. Hold back on the stick to fly out. And push forward to fly down. Now, 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 now. Now, 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 now. Yes. Yes. Keep shooting. The pilot. Into the center. Oh my god! <laughs> Destruction! <laughs> Fire the missiles at the train! Hurry! I love the green color. I'm not gonna lie. It, 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 okay, yeah, it's too bright. But I absolutely love it. It looks great at night. It's super vibrant. Like, look at this. I'm just completely green now. It's awesome. I'm a Jedi. Just like my father before me. But guys, that line for uh, Smuggler's Run was pretty long. So our day here at Hollywood Studios is coming to an end. It was an incredibly magical one. One where we were able to do, it's not even a ride, all right? All right, uh, Rise of the Resistance, it's an experience. And we were also able to build the lightsaber at Savi's Workshop. I've been having a lot of fun with it. I think about just walking around the park with it, just waving it around, but I'll save that just for Galaxy's Edge. That I was just walking around, waving it all around, Galaxy's Edge. I'll, I'll save it for there. I'll definitely be uh, be playing around with them more, maybe getting some pictures when I come back. The entire experience of building a lightsaber at Savi's Workshop, it's great. A lot of people will say, you know, $200 is a bit overpriced. And I, I, maybe they are right, but it's such an amazing experience. And being able to have an awesome lightsaber of your own, it's, it's worth it in my opinion. It really is. Especially, you know, you're looking for a great experience and an ultimate souvenir for the rest of your life. Just... Trust me, what I'm telling you, Savi's workshop is, is amazing. But now we are heading out of the park because we have to head to downtown Disney. Downtown Disney. I still call it downtown Disney sometimes. There are times where it slips my mind that years ago they changed their name. We're heading back to Disney Springs because we have dinner at the boathouse. I have, I have insanely high expectations. I've heard great things about that restaurant. Everyone talks wonders about it, so I do have high expectations. And, uh,. And let's see if it performs. I, I personally think it will. So uh, let's head over there. I'm Sheriff Woody, and the only rule around here: have a great time. You know, it is that we haven't seen this show yet. This is one of the shows that are just you need to see it. You need to see it. It gives you a different perspective into, into Walt Disney and his life and all of that. You know, when you look into Walt Disney's life, he's a huge inspiration for, for so many people, including myself. He, he, he went through, you know, a very miserable uh, childhood and, and life and he worked and he kept on moving forward and, and he did everything possible in order to, to succeed. And, and that, that right there is, is clear inspiration in my life, you know, just it's that, that mentality of, of always working towards your dreams. You know, never stop dreaming. Fight for it. Fight for it your entire life. That's a huge inspiration to me, and 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 I will always consider Walt Disney as one of my idols. Always. As you can see, there are no more projections on the Tower of Terror. It's sad, you know. I couldn't see them all. I saw two of them, and I absolutely love it. But that's more than enough for me. And also still having 
the Christmas decorations up and the Christmas music playing. It's a great, great day and, and that's more than enough for me. It really is. Next year I know that it will be better and that uh, you know, I, I'm very hopeful for this year. I, I think that next year is going to be a better Christmas season and, and we'll be able to get everything back and have an amazing time. Well, most likely this will be the last time that I see Hollywood Studios fully decked out for the holiday season. I, I love Hollywood Studios uh, during Christmas. Decorations are awesome, music is amazing. So, uh, well, until next year. And now, since there is no uh, transportation directly to Disney Springs, we're gonna hop on the Skyliner, go to Caribbean Beach, and from Caribbean Beach, take a bus directly to Disney Springs, and finally try the boathouse. Watch your step, you may kidding. Uh, Alright, so we're actually hopping back on the Skyliner and going to another resort. This is the problem that I have with, with resorts like Caribbean Beach, Coronado Springs. It's places that are enormous and you have to walk a mile to catch a bus. That, that's, that's the biggest uh, pain in the butt that these resorts have, really. It's, it's not fun at all and that is why I do not like staying in these resorts. Hey, you know what? After, after everything that happened, you know, at least we're gonna get a glimpse of the Riviera Resort. We still haven't been inside of it, so just uh, make our way to the bus stop here. And we're gonna see a little bit of it. We are gonna be back because we are eating at Topolino's Terrace. Man, the Riviera is a beautiful resort. Man, it just sucks that, that we couldn't come here earlier. It's, it's beautiful. Finally, we made it to Disney Springs. It only took um, a, quite a, a journey right, of uh, getting on the Skyliner, heading to Caribbean Beach, trying to figure out a, a way to a bus stop, reminding myself why I am not a fan of Caribbean Beach, then actually getting back on the Skyliner, heading to Riviera, Finally seen Riviera for the first time. It's actually a stunning resort. Getting on the bus and then coming here. It's like the next Indiana Jones film. I think it's just gonna be this, trying to get to Disney Springs. But uh, seriously speaking, Disney, please get the, the buses from the parks to Disney Springs back up and running. But it is what it is. We figured it out. We're finally here. We are running a bit late to the boathouse, but Ash is there to talk to the people there at Boathouse and they said it's, it's okay uh, and that uh, they'll seat us down when we get there. So, again, the customer service here in Disney. Alright guys, we are in the Boathouse, we're sitting down. You know I've told you how um, bread services can be very dangerous, especially if the bread is very good? The Boathouse is one of those places that has very dangerous bread services. This is a beautiful roll with like a, a honey glaze on the outside and butter, salty, sweet. This is amazing. Uh, I could just come here and eat bread. <laughs> that's just bread, that's it. Oh man. Just the bread service alone, we're off to a great start. Now, we have been looking at the menu. I'm looking at their ribeye. Now the ribeye is 75 day dry aged and it's grass fed Australian beef which I don't know what it is but like Australians know how to make good beef I, I don't know what it is about them so I'm, I think that's what I'm leaning towards in terms of appetizers we're gonna get the firecracker shrimp and also the hoisin chili calamari I've heard good things about both of those uh, my friend Ryan he says that both of those things are really good so uh, we'll see how that goes all right guys well we got two appetizers firecracker shrimp and the hoisin chili calamari I'm going with the firecracker shrimp first. If you see a fork, that's Alejandro. <laughs> Let's go for it. Mm. Let me get it, let me get this, let me get this. Oh no, I'm in prison. <laughs> All right, but let's go for the firecracker shrimp. So, the shrimp are really good. Bit of a kick to them, especially for me since I, I am weaker when it comes to spice. It's really good, really breaded perfectly. I mean, I mean it's, when you're breading shrimp, you don't want to 
put too much bread in because then it kind of takes away from the shrimp itself. This one's just a nice breading that gives it a, a nice crispy exterior. And then the shrimp itself cooked perfectly. The sauce is really good. You get some taste of like peppers in there. There are peppers inside of the dish itself. So I'm guessing that's like the flavor seeping out of that going into the shrimp. Really good. <laughs> really good. Now I want to try the calamari with the poison chili sauce. I, I was like a little slow and like more than half of the calamari dish is empty. <laughs> Alright, let's give it a try. Mm. Guys, the calamari is, is amazing. Alright, bread it perfectly, full of flavor. With the calamari itself, full of flavor. And it comes with this uh, hoisin chili sauce. I am a huge fan of hoisin chili because it, it's, it's a chili sauce that is not spicy at all. It's actually more on the sweeter side, which definitely a benefit and a plus in my books. It is really good. So far with the bread and the two appetizers, it's two thumbs up here at the boathouse. Wow. So far, I, I'm really impressed. I really am. Like I, I told you guys, I set my standards really high for the boathouse because I've heard so many people talking amazing things about the boathouse and it's super popular restaurant. So I set my standards high. So far with the appetizers alone, standards like standards have been completely broken right, and exceeded. Especially with the appetizers. We'll see how the steaks do. Steaks sound absolutely amazing and a 75 day dry aged. I'm excited. Alright guys, so I did end up going with the 75 day dry aged ribeye. I'm super excited to give it a try. 75 day dry aged, so let's see how it goes. Alright guys, ribeye. Absolutely amazing, great flavor to it, super tender. It, it literally melts in your mouth. The, the steak itself, not just the fat, no, 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 the steak is so tender. You you barely have to chew. It is absolutely amazing. But now I want to try Ash's tuna. It looks spectacular. Just take a look at that. They said it's sushi grade, which is always the best grade that you can get for your fish. All right, let's go with the tuna now. Wow. As my dog would say, wow. Wow, <laughs> that tuna, amazing taste to it, perfect sear, amazing taste, and, and on top of all of that, it's so fresh, which is super important when you're eating fish. Wow, <laughs> it's hard to pick which one's better. I honestly can't tell you whether it's the ribeye or the uh, or the tuna. I can't tell you which one's better. The ribeye is amazing, but so is the tuna. I think I stick my fork into my lemonade. <laughs> I really hope you guys heard that. I really hope. <laughs> Alright guys, so so far everything has been absolutely amazing. I really want to go for those truffle fries. Alright, so let's, let's try it. Oh yeah, those fries are good. The fries already have an amazing taste. They're one of the best tasting fries I've ever had in my life. Dipped in that lemon aioli, you get that hint of lemon in it. Oh my god. Wow. Wow, you know what? Hey, I, I'm telling you, I had high expectations for Boathouse, but uh, man, they're doing a good job. <laughs> Alright guys, this restaurant right here, the Boathouse, I had high expectations for it. I'm, I'm gonna say it again. I had high expectations for it. I heard a lot of amazing things. Everyone talked wonders about it. Everyone said that it's a great restaurant. I know some people that say that this is their favorite restaurant on Walt Disney World property. And honestly, I could see why this restaurant exceeded all of the expectations that I've set for it. Everything that we had today was absolutely amazing. The appetizers and the entree, the truffle fries, are the, one of the best fries, if not the best fries I've ever had in my life. Wow, everything that we had here was was spectacular. Firecracker shrimp, the hoisin chili calamari, and the ribeye, all great options. I definitely need to be back here again and again and again. I want to try different things. Probably the next time that I come, I will be getting the tuna that Ash had because that tuna was amazing as well. Uh, there, it's a huge extensive menu. There are a lot of things that sound amazing. So uh, I think this could crack my top 10. Maybe. I, I, I don't know just yet, but uh, wow, I'm impressed. Alright guys, so for dessert, we didn't eat anything at the boathouse. We decided to just 
come over like cross the street basically to Vivoli Il Gelato. I get with the banana gelato, which obviously anything banana and me okay, is a, a link made in heaven, really. But uh, let's give it a try. Oh, oh yes. Hey guys, you want the best description of of this banana gelato? It literally, it. it <laughs> <laughs> The banana gelato literally just tastes like they got bananas, they crushed it up, and then turned it into like a cream. This is so good. No lie, it literally just tastes like natural banana. Super creamy. This is amazing. This is really amazing. So I gotta say guys, you know, tonight has been a great, great dining night, you know? First off, Boathouse was absolutely amazing. I don't think I've, I've expressed how amazing it was. It, it was. it was an incredible restaurant. I'm telling you, my expectations were, were, were brutally high and it exceeded all of those expectations. The appetizer, the entree, everything about it, absolutely amazing. We didn't try any dessert, but we did leave this crossover, Ida Vivoli gelato, absolutely amazing. That banana gelato, so good. My God, it, it tasted like fresh, actual bananas and it, it was super amazing. So, wow. Not closing it off just yet. We're gonna close it off in the lodge like always. Uh, that's where we're heading to right now. Alright guys, today was an incredible day. Started off our day, we did sleep in a little bit, did watch a soccer game before heading off to Hollywood Studios. We had lunch at Ronto Roasters, but not before we were able to acquire a boarding group pass for Rise of the Resistance. We ate our Ronto Roasters, went to Savi's workshop, built right a brand new lightsaber which is still absolutely stunning then we rode on rise of the resistance then we did smugglers run oh man it was an incredible day at hollywood studios then we had to leave because we went to go eat at the boathouse and man was it good i'm telling you i had super high expectations for it i really did but it not only met all of those expectations it exceeded it all and, and for that to happen, I mean, I set super high standards for it. Why? Well, because a lot of people talked amazing things about it. I know some people that have said it's their favorite restaurant on Walt Disney World property, it's the best. So I'm like, you know what, man? I've heard a lot of people talk amazing things about the boathouse. It must be good. So I went, I set my expectations high, and man, was it good. The firecracker shrimp, it was spicy. Uh, it had peppers in it, uh, serrano peppers in it, and and I guess like the flavor of the peppers, it seeped out into the shrimp, and it was such an amazing taste. And the best part is, is that you got those peppers. It was a bit spicy. It was that it did have a kick to it, but it wasn't overbearing. It wasn't something that I couldn't handle. So you got that little bit of a kick, that amazing taste. And the best part was, it wasn't overly spicy. Then you had the calamari with that hoisin chili sauce. I love hoisin chili. It, it was absolutely amazing, both appetizers. And then you move on to my entree, which was that 75 day dry aged Gibson Heritage grass fred Australian steak. Oh my God, was that ribeye good. And I'm starting to see, now this was a second dry aged steak that I have, the other one was a capa. And you could tell that the flavor is different. It has such a strong, amazing flavor to it that not much, not many things have. Like not other steaks that I've had before in my life have. So it's super amazing, super unique, very flavorful, very tender, an amazing steak. Maybe it makes its way to the top five best steaks that I've ever had. Doesn't beat the ribeye from Kappa. Doesn't beat the filet mignon from Bull and Bear or from La Cellier. Don't know about Shula's, maybe it doesn't be Shula's, I, I don't know. I have to like sit down and process this all, but man was it amazing. And after our amazing dining experience at the boathouse, walked a little bit, went to Vivoli Il Gelato, and we had some amazing gelato there. I had the banana one, man was it good. Today was a great day. Today was an absolutely amazing day. And tomorrow, it's another magical one. 
We're gonna spend the entire day at Epcot basically because we have lunch at Tepanero where we're going to be trying authentic A5 Japanese Wagyu. I am excited for that. And then we'll be closing off our day with a dinner at Tutto Italia. I love Tutto Italia. I've missed it so much. We haven't gone back in, in like two years. So I'm super excited to be back. Oh man, it's gonna be a great day. But that is for the next vlog. As always, thank you for being part of the Disney family and may the force be with you. <laughs>